Okay, here we are, another day, another video, and today I want to talk about something that I think is really, really important, and which I've been thinking about and working on since actually 2013, and that is the topic, basically, the human condition. How are we, what are we doing, how are we treating our fellow earthlings, how are we going to fix the problems? What is the real problem? I have a, had a long conversation with my father on the telephone, uh, actually an hour ago, and we came into talking about these things, or maybe I did. And some of the things... I made one painting called The Human Condition in 2013, and my goal was to actually make a whole exhibition that tackles everything from the, the absolute worst of humanity to the absolute best. And I did say that at best we human beings are like the gods. But then I realized, I read the Quran, I read the Bible, I've studied the gods in all religions, and I have to say, no, 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 that is a cliché. At best, humans are way better than the gods. We do not want to resemble the gods. The gods are vindictive, they are precocious, they are narcissistic, they demand things of us that no one should demand from anyone. Submission, belief without reason, uh, and they will destroy us if we don't do their bidding. Just like the Caligulas of the world, like the Saddam Husseins of the world, like the Hitlers and the Stalins of the world, they will destroy us. So, when I think about the best people in humanity, I would say... People like Carl Sagan, who made uh, the first uh, um, um, the first series. Um, God, how could I forget that? Cosmos, the first Cosmos series, where he says something that I I just can't get out of my head, and which is so beautiful. He says, "We are the way." for the universe to know itself. And true, I tattooed evolution here, and I tattooed all the elements on my, my arm, and I also tattooed a G for gravity. I also tattooed for fun the 42 number that comes from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the number for everything, which actually also correspond with a number that comes up in certain mathematical stuff about the universe, but that's not a thing. Um, I did that because true uh, from the Big Bang through the creation of all the elements through gravity, the universe through then creation first creation of, of the elements and the planets and all the elements and then through chemistry and basically four billion years of evolution, the universe became conscious through us, okay? So every single human being on this planet is the universe seeing itself. And that is one of the most profound humanistic ways of thinking you can imagine. Because... That makes human beings the most important thing of all. And when you understand that, you also understand that every single human being on the planet are as important as you or me. They are me. I am they through this consciousness. I'm not a religious person. I'm a... I'm a basically uh, anti-theist. I hate religion. I don't hate the religious, and that is very important. 
They are as human as me. They are, they are good religious people. They are horrible religious people. But there is something to that when there was a guy, I don't remember his name now, but he said, uh, for a good man, not for a bad man to do bad things, that is natural. But for a good man to do bad things, you need religion. And that also, uh, you know, that I, I see political ideology as or parties as a form of religion. It creates bias, it creates mass hysteria, it creates uh, mass movements, it creates all the things we need to make the world a worse place. Personally, I'm a totally independent thinker. I hope so. I try to be. And one of my greatest heroes was the late Christopher Hitchens, who wrote this book, uh, um, uh, Hitch 22. I also have his signature here. I got it in New York at uh, 95Y or something. Uh, in a debate between him and Tariq Ramadan about is, is, the, uh, is Islam a religion of peace, which of course it is not. Uh, and there's a video about that debate on YouTube, by the way, so you should maybe look it up. Uh, he was also one of the beams of light in a pile of shit. You have people like Elon Musk who is creating Starship to get us out into the universe, which has to become our playground because the Earth won't last forever. The Earth has about, you, in like 300 million years, there won't be able to be any life on the surface of the Earth because the sun is getting bigger and warmer. And in 4 billion years or 5 billion years, the in four billion years, the Earth will be eaten by the Sun and most of the of the, the solar system, and then five billion years, it's goodbye Sun. So if we haven't evolved into space by then, we are basically fucked. Okay, we are instinct. Hopefully, we won't kill ourselves off before that, and of course. Uh, I'm not this nutty environmentalist. I don't think that is the greatest problem for humanity. I think it is a, more the global nihilism. There is some, something profoundly wrong with the world when the biggest economies in the world are three things. It is, except from poverty, of course. Uh, it is uh, drugs, porn, and weapons. And then you probably have the food industry and the sugar industry and the alcohol industry and, and all these things. And the poverty, the extreme poverty in the world right now, almost, okay, 689 million people are living on less than $1.9 a day, 24% is living on $3.20 a day, and 436 less than $5.5 a day. Obesity in the United States, men 72%, women 63%, and we in Norway is basically getting there. England, same thing. Uh, globally, uh, I think, uh, well, globally, it is like, I think it was 1.9 billion people are obese. Okay, so you have 1.9 billion people who is basically eating themselves to death. At the same time, that extreme poverty, 436 percent of the world's population is living on less than 5.5 dollars a day and 1.9 billion are eating themselves to death and creating a situation because as we know covid 
is basically dangerous for the very old in nursing homes and stuff like that. And it's also extremely dangerous for people over a certain age, like 40 or 60 or whatever, that is really obese and have diabetes, which of course comes from obesity. Uh, the global food waste is, listen to this, it is 1.3 billion tons of edible food. Now, you have 4.3.6, less than $5.5 .5 a day, then you have 1.3 billion tons of edible food thrown away. And we think that so stopping some plastic bags in the stores would make any fucking difference? Do you have any idea how much fertilizer, how much water, how much CO2, how much production cost that goes into creating 1.3 billion tons of edible food that is thrown away? And despite this edible food thrown away, we have 1.9 billion people who are over overeating too many calories. I mean, in, in a half a liter of, I think it's a half a liter, of Coca-Cola, you have 18 cubes of sugar. There is nothing in Coca-Cola we need. There is absolutely nothing no single calorie in this that we need. And it's one of the best sellers of the world. So we are using corn, sugar canes, sweet potatoes, and other things to create a whole bunch of sugar that is poured into a product that are killing us. So does, we are producing enormous amount of uh, potatoes, of corn, of, of all kinds of stuff to create beer, to create spirits, or to create uh, wine. Think about all the beautiful grapes that are produced just to create a lot of cheap wine, which is filled up with sugar that is basically in and as we know alcohol is not good for you even red wine is not good for you actually to to get enough resveratrol that antioxidant to have a health benefit you have to drink like 30 bottles of wine a day okay to get it if you take a little bit of olive oil and you drink it you get the same effect from a little bit of good olive oil, okay? Uh, I can go on and on with this. But just think about, think about the amount of, and that is despite the, all the food we are throwing away, all, all the energy, all the fertilizer, all the land that is going into producing too much alcohol, which is actually one of the drivers for the obesity epidemic. I'm going to go deeper into that in a different video. This is just more like a, like a get it all out there. Um, and it's not even making people happy. It's making them sick, it makes them depressed, it makes them fat, it makes them, uh, they get hardened. Yeah, that too. Just think about how this obesity affects healthcare. Now, in Norway, we have universal healthcare. We get free healthcare. But how the hell, uh, how much oil do we have to pump up from the North Sea? when basically half the population is now obese and with the upcoming heart attacks and and uh, of course deep diabetes and all the all the things that is coming
because people are getting older, but they're not, because, they're not necessarily becoming older because they are more healthy. They are becoming older because we are getting better to treat self-inflicted wounds, basically, because most people uh, wouldn't survive into that old age if you don't give them some medicines, which basically is to stop people from dying from things like diabetes and uh, obesity. Some people do get old anyway, but it's a few of them. Uh, so it's also when you eat too much, when you consume too much and you become unhealthy, you also become, of course, less productive. You can actually, obesity leads to a less good brain. Your brain won't be able to process data, it won't be able to work as well. It's like you pour some shit into your computer and you start it up and it doesn't really work that well. It kind of, you know, it doesn't really work. And that is what you are doing to yourself when you lead an unhealthy life. And maybe, ma many people tell me, oh you're such a, such a, pleasure killer or whatever. There was one guy actually I debated a little bit about COVID and as we know in Norway there was just this lockdown again and there was the politicians was talking about locking down the Vinmonopole because in Norway you have to go to a place to buy liquor. You can actually buy beer in the store but you have to go to a certain store called Vinmonopole. It's a monopoly in a way. It sells wine and spirits. And because there were going to be a lockdown, people were standing in queue for hours to get their booze, okay? So, so when you have a virus that destroys your immune system, wouldn't it be a good time to eat some fucking broccoli and some fish and get some vegetables and go for a walk, maybe play with your children? I don't know, do something good. You know, they also close down the gym, so you can't exercise. So you have to be an idealist like me to get that done and do it at home. But people are doing the wrong choices all the time. And this kind of affects the whole, the whole of the world. I mean, the environmentalist who is crying so loud about uh, CO2, I do agree that global warming will or maybe will become a problem because of man-made CO2. But you won't solve this by stopping pumping oil. That is not how to solve it. Because what you have to, have to take a grip on is the overproduction, the overconsumption. All of these things are driving the fact that we are pumping more oil and using more more CO2. That is the driving force in this, okay? It isn't, it isn't the, the, the plastic bags or the plastic straws or, or oh, we, we shouldn't eat meat. Yeah, well, you know, if you eat meat in the right way, if you use the whole animal like they used to do, you make bone marrow soup of the bones, you use the skin to make clothes, you, uh, you use all the uh, intestines to make soups or other dishes. You use all the, all the fat. It's very important. If you eat fat and vegetables you, and, and, and meat, you get full. That is how humans actually are supposed to eat. Instead, we are pouring all the sugary shit we don't need, which are actually destroying our bodies and making us fat. Because if you eat fat and protein and some vegetables, you get full very fast. It's very limited to how much meat or fat you can eat until you get full. But if you keep on eating sugar, you never get full. Because it taps into the, the same uh, receptors in the brain that cocaine does or, or any other drug. And that is also the, the thing. Drug, drugs are the third largest economy in the world next to porn and weapons if I got it right okay well 
And here's one for the people who use drugs, and I mean any illegal drug. There's a debate about legalizing marijuana. I totally disagree. I absolutely, 100% disagree. That I will make another video on it, but I'm going to shortly explain why. I have seen the effect on hashish and marijuana on people. I've seen a few friends become psychotic. I've seen people lose their ability to create. I've okay, sorry, I went out. There wasn't any more uh, card left, so I just have to. Okay, back to uh, back to what I was talking about. I've seen, as I said, friends become psychotic. I've seen the impact on people with drugs. I've seen how people have become dependent of cocaine. I've seen how people have been destroyed by alcohol. I've seen all this personally. I actually was quite alcohol dependent myself. As I say, I used like three years of my life from basically 1980, 1989 until I will say 1992 to evolve an alcohol problem. Now my alcohol problem was like I drank maybe once, two and really bad week, three times a week. I never drank in the morning, stuff like that, but it was devastating. It was devastating for my health. It was devastating for my psyche. It was devastating for, for my work, my art, everything and I used like 15 years to get this shit under control now I drink maybe once a month a bottle of wine I have fun and I got it under control but I felt the abstinence on my body and I know how that feels and it was really hard to walk back the cat now but when it comes to drugs which is the third largest economy in the world you can ask this question who is driving this is it the drug dealers? Is it the drug cartels? Or is it the customer? When you, as a rich person, or a person in the West, are buying this, as a person I used to have as a friend told me, this is good cocaine. What he meant with that, but of course it was strong, was strong cocaine, it was pure cocaine. And... Uh, it's ridiculous actually to say it's 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 good when it's more devastating for you so and he of course had big problems now when you buy the drugs what are you actually doing when you buy these drugs what are you doing what you are doing is financing the mafia and you are financing the drug cartels who is making this and you are financing basically the production of human tragedy and that is just to snort this up your nose so you can feel a little bit happy and that is while one point Well, basically half the world's population, 43%, are living on $1.5 a day. And that is, I had this, this funny conversation with a heroin addict in the city, because he's selling this, they have this, this magazine they can sell to get some money. And he asked me if I wanted to buy it. And I said, well, I can't do that because then I would actually support the Taliban. And he said, what? And I explained to him, well, you know, if I buy this and you buy heroin, first the money goes to the mafia, the, the smugglers, and then all the way back to the Taliban who is producing this shit in in." Uh, Afghanistan, who is then using the money to buy weapons to suppress their own population and to wage war. And we have to go down there and kill the Taliban, which is basically financed by 
this magazine that the guy is selling. I'm not criticizing him because, I mean, drug addicts and prostitutes and, and always have this horrible, usually have a horrible history in their background. I mean, 6% of children in the world are sexually abused, according to the uh, Red Cross, or was it the World? One out of five children are kind of hit or some sort of abuse at home. One out of five. So there is not, there is enough horrible shit going on in, in the homes to create a situation where you can fill up all the prisons and all the uh, the streets are full of drug addicts and then on top of this you have the poverty and you have all this so there is enough tragedy to go around so I'm not blaming this guy I'm blaming the system for not picking him up and basically forcing in him into some kind of, uh, of treatment which would actually be the right thing to do because, as I said in the beginning, this guy is a conscious being. He is me. He is the universe gone conscious. And he is walking around, killing himself, and at the same time supporting one of the biggest economies in the world, which is drugs. Uh, so when you as a rich person or a person in the West, buy cocaine or any other drug, you should know that you are killing people. When you buy this, you are killing people. When you make yourself obese and you make yourself unhealthy, you are destroying the planet. You are the problem. When you throw away food just because there's a little bit... In the stores, you know the stores in Norway? Because I started to go, before I go into the store now, I look in a dumpster. Okay, there's broccoli, there's apragas, there are all kinds of shit, bananas, everything I need. And then I go into the store and I buy what I need, like it's eggs or something that I can't find. So I reduced my own, basically my own food budget with two, two and a half thousand kroner a month. And that is basically, I cut it down to one third. I have to use some food just by looking in to the dumpster. Because I like to eat healthy food, I eat a lot of vegetables and, and stuff like that. So, and that is quite expensive, you know. But they are throwing it away. And I just pick it up and I use it. And I'm not ashamed of saying so. And I think more people should do it. Uh, but... You know, in Norway, we have a lot of money. People don't give a shit. They don't care about stuff like that. And they just continue the party until we run out of, basically, resources. Which we probably will someday. Now, uh, so what, I, what I'm advocating here is personal responsibility. Try to be... A force of good in the world. Try to be, try to do the right things. I've done my share of wrong things and wrong choices and I got into trouble for it and I have basically destroyed much of my own career by all my bad choices. I used too much money. I, I, I even spent my mother and father's money I have lived in hotels and I have been partying and I've been doing so many mistakes. And I'm ashamed of that. I'm really ashamed of that. And that, that kind of narcissistic way of being, this thing you go for the short bus all the time. I watch my share of porn. I'm not proud of it. It is the worst thing. Basically, it's, it's just, just the porn industry is filled up with abused children. Okay? You go, go and check the facts. I'm going to link to our site. Uh, or, um, I'm going to link to this um, uh, channel on YouTube called the Soft White Underbelly. 
it's a channel where they are uh, interviewing a lot of a lot of uh, porn stars and and stars is such a ridiculous word. There is no star. There is no stars in porn. Okay, it's ridiculous. Drug addicts. They also interview other people from pimps to sex offenders, you know, all kinds of people. And the stories, when you see people, when you actually hear their stories, you realize that free will, this notion of free will that people are hiding behind to be able to use things like pornography, is just fucking ridiculous. It is like hashish. We don't need it. We do not need more drugs. We need less drugs. We need to learn how to tap into our inner abilities to live our lives. We need to connect with what is important. We need, basically need a new beginning. We need to start teaching kids not to trust their own feelings, not to trust their own thoughts, but to go for knowledge, doubt, being humble, knowing that you can learn from the best. You don't know everything and you should know that. There are so many things we could do. Just teaching children the difference between objective reality and subjective belief would be a great place to start. It would be amazing. And that is what started my journey into a deeper form of introspection. Uh, where you actually start seeing yourself from the outside and you start seeing all the mistakes you do. And when you come to that point, you also, of course, realize that free will can go jump in the ocean. But you realize that you have to start learning from your mistakes. You can't just keep on repeating yourself for eternity and then expect a different result. And that starts with that understanding that objective reality is more important to you uh, for your own ev evolution as a human being than your personal emotions and bias because they are usually wrong. Human beings are born into a bipolar situation. We are born with all the traits of our lower origins. We have, a, have the old brain, the reptile brain, and we have this, this big thing here. And we have some parts of the brain in the front that makes us kind of see ourselves from the outside. There are one between 1 and 3% of the population which are born psychopaths, but even they doesn't necessarily have to become bad people. But if you combine that gene with a bad upbringing, you have the worst people and the, the, the people who do the worst things. You can also destroy a child's mind with abuse and 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 all kinds of stuff that will lead them to become sociopaths, narcissists, and they will also do ba very bad things. But most people, I think, most people, most people will, with the right way of looking at life, start to look at themselves and ask, do I want to be fat? Do, do, is it a good thing to only feel happy when I drink more or I eat more or I watch more porn or bad, or bad uh, entertainment or, or just keep on piling in more, more, more? And the answer is no. It only leads to a breakdown of basically the collective health of the Western society. It has led to a nihilism and a, and a collective eating disorder, basically eating disorder, which is food, porn, alcohol, drugs, 
bad entertainment and basically being vicious. So when people ask me what I think are people good or bad, I would say we are inherently bad because we are animals and our lower origin are bad in the way we are like the hyena. We, the old brain will bite, bite the, 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 the water buffalo in the arse and watch it bleed until it becomes so weak that we can actually eat it alive. Then we have the new brain, which makes us see ourselves from the outside, the consciousness that I was talking about, that makes us into the most amazing creature that we know of that the universe has uh, came, come up with. And the difference between the two are introspection and the evolution of the conscious mind. The deeper we go, and I, and I agree with this, to go really deep, you have to know about the bad, the really bad, the really, really, really bad. And you have to see the really, really, really good, the most beautiful things, the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci, the voice of, of Carl Sagan in Cosmos, the voices from the dead Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epicurus. Listen to the, to, uh, the lectures of Christopher Hitchens or Sam Harris or any of the great people in the world and learn from them. Learn from them. Especially go into Stoic philosophy. Stoic philosophy could actually be, if, if it was implemented in all schools, it could be the antidote to the destruction of the planet and humanity. Because it teaches us that less is more. And if it is one thing that would solve everything, is that people just understood that less is more, and true pleasure comes from treating your fellow being like it was you, or your daughter, or your parents, or somebody you really, really love. And we would see every human being, also that little poor girl over there, which is one of the 43 she probably lives on less than one dollar a day, not even that, okay? Twenty-five children die every day of starvation and lack of medicine, okay? That's a hell of a lot of children. And we are spending billions on COVID, which is probably extremely overrated and not even close to being as dangerous as the politicians would say. But anyway, if we could understand this single thing that the girl on the webcam was probably abused as a child, or she is poor, or she is trafficked, or there's something really bad happened in her life, it will be much harder to use it, to look at her when you wank your carrot, okay? Uh, why people are able to buy sex, it's just totally beyond me. First of all, sex for me is when two people are fucking or mingling. Uh, and you can't really buy sex. You can't buy, you can't buy love. <laughs> I mean, and I always say, the day I have to buy sex is the day I stop having it because Every person, every girl, every person that you see in these situations are me or you or the ones you love. So if you can get that into your thick head, everything will start tasting 
a little bit worse. And also remember, the less you drink, the better it tastes. The less you eat, the better it tastes. The more you use your brain, the better you feel. The more creative you are, the better you are. The more creative you are, the more human you are. And I think, in closing, if we could go for, for these things, we would stop destroying the Amazon rainforest to produce soya, to feed cattle, to create hamburgers we don't need. We wouldn't use most of our land areas in the world to create corn that we basically make into sugar. We would use it to create good food for the whole of humanity. But we have nationalism, we have tribalism, we have all these things that is something that the globe is, in my view, one country. Humanity is one humanity. It isn't Norwegians or Americans or English or the Ugandans or whatever. It is one humanity. So, with this, I will rest my case for now. I think I have touched many things, probably also over and over again. But I need to get this off my chest. And I'm going to make a huge exhibition. It will probably take me like three years. There will also be a book. A huge exhibition called The Human Condition, where I will touch all these things in essay form and, and painting form. And I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, you have a lot of stuff coming from me, hopefully. So if I live, I will create. And I will create until the day I drop. As Christopher Hitchens once said when he was asked how long he was going to write. And he just looked at the camera and he said, until I drop. And that is exactly what my hero, my hero, because I'm supposed not to be allowed to say hero. Christopher Hitchens said, don't have heroes. Well, Mr. Christopher Hitchens, I will not oblige, I will call you my hero. And I will tell this person, who, which is now is gone, thank you. And with this, I think I now will rest my case.